Hey all, this is Anjali and this is my third video for output questions for computer science class 12. Like in the last video, I asked you to solve this question of your own and we had to discuss it in this one. I hope you must have solved it by now. Like this is the one where you have to use the random function. As you could see, here we have an array of strings where at position 0, I have red. At position 1, I have blue. At position 2, I have pink in this. And at position 3, I have black. Then we have a variable paint. And we start the loop which works, starts working from 1. And it has to go up to 3. So i is 1, then it will become 2, then it will become 3. That means the loop will work 3 times. And what we are doing inside the loop is, we are finding a random number between 2, that is it will give you 0 or 1 plus 1 will give me 1 or 2. So what I get in paint is that's either 1 or 2. So we get 1 or 2 in paint and that is what is being printed here, color paint. That means the string at index 1 or string at index 2 will be printed from the array named color. So color paint means either color 1 will be printed or color 2 will be printed. At color 1 we have blue at color 2 we have pink so whatever will be printed that would be a combination of blue and pink we cannot have red we cannot have black so out of these four options the first one is blue pink blue yeah that is possible then it is red blue pink it is not possible because red is not allowed blue pink blue is possible it's the same as option one then fourth is blue pink pink that is also possible so here option number one option number three and option number four, all three are possible outputs for the question. Then is your question 10, that is regarding strings. It's same as we have done good at logic above. So the question which we did here, the last question, that was your question number seven, I guess. This good at logic, it's the similar thing, only the string is different. It's mind at work exclamation mark. So what happens over here is you have the string. It starts from the very first position. M is an alphabet, so this condition is false. So it comes here. M is upper. Yes, it's true. So we get the next character, M, N. So this M will be changed to capital N, M, N, O. So the next character in the alphabet series comes. Then if it is I, first condition is false. It's not upper, so it comes here. At i, we do i plus 1. That means the next position has to be put. So at next position, that is at text 2, I have small n, which comes at text 1. So text 2 is copied to text 1. So we have small n at text 2, that comes at text 1. Then i becomes 2, we have small n. So small n means the text 3 value will come at position 2. So we get D at position 2. Then since D is small, we get the value at text 3 over here. So we get the at the rate sign here. Next character is at the rate. So not is alpha is true. It's not an alphabet. It's changed to the star sign. So your at the rate sign is changed with the star sign. Then you get W. So again, it checks. It, this condition is false since it's an alphabet. It checks if it's upper. Yes. So W, X, Y, Z. So the next character from W is capital X. And then comes O, which is small. So first condition is false. Second is false. As per the else part, we put the next character here. That's small r. And then at the place of small r, we get small k. At the place of small k, we get exclamation mark. And at the place of exclamation mark, we get star. That's it. Then we get null and it stops and then it prints the string. So this is your output. That is capital N, small n, small d, at the rate sign, star sign, capital X, small r, small k, exclamation sign and star sign. So that is the output for this question and the way we solved is same as we say, so solved it for good logic. Again, this question, I'm not going to tell the output for this. You're going to do it of your own. 
So you can note down this question. This is again same as we've done question number 8, the increment and decrement thing. So you can try doing it once of your own. And I'm just telling you the output so that you can just match and how you have to solve it. You have to check it out of your own. In case you're not getting it how to do, do write in the comment section. I'll explain you how we get the output. So the output should over here be in the first row. We get 10, then 15. In the next line, I get 21. And 13. And before this, obviously, you have to write 1 and then this arrow. And same way, 2 and the arrow. Since the loop is working twice, we have to do it once again. So this time it will print 11 and b minus 5 that is 16 then we get 2 and this time we get 22 and 18. so this will be the output of your code and if you have done it of your own and match it this is post increment, you get printed, but it becomes 11. 20 minus 5 is 15. This is pre increment. Here it printed the difference, but it didn't change V, so V becomes 21. And then U became 11 in the last statement, so plus 2 makes it 13. And same way it's done for the second time. Okay, now comes question number 12. It's an interesting one since it has arrays and pointers. So we have an array over here which has four numbers. So obviously we start from position 0. So 2 is at position 0, 4 is at 1, 8 is at 2, and 10 is at position 3. So these are the positions. We've taken a pointer PTR which holds the base address of the array. That is address of element 2. Let's say the base address is 100 for the array. So as per that, 2 is stored at address 100. 4 is stored at 102, 8 is stored at 104, and 10 is stored at 106. Now, C is initially 0. C less than 3 is true. We come here, we print the value at PTR. PTR is 100, that means the first value will be printed, which is 2. And after 2, we print at the rate sign. Then PTR++. plus plus. When PTR++ plus plus happens, your pointer goes to next memory location and that next memory location will be 102 that is 4 so c is 1 1 less than 3 is true it comes inside and it prints the value at address 102 so 4 gets printed here with an at the rate sign then ptr increases becomes 104 so it goes one location ahead and we have 8 at 104, C becomes 2, 2 less than 3 is true, it comes here, prints the value at address 104 with an at the rate sign. Then PTR increases becomes 106, that is the base address for 10, but now C becomes 3. Now since C becomes 3, 3 less than 3 is false. We come out of the loop, it gives NL, that means whatever will be printed will be printed on the next line now. Then C is 0, C less than 4. The next loop starts, C is 0, C less than 4 is true. And here what do we have? Value at address PTR is multiply equal to 2. That means whatever is the value at PTR, we have to multiply it by 2 and store it back at that same address. So address PTR is right now 106 which is the base address for 10. So 10 is multiplied by 2, becomes 20, and it's overwritten. So in the array, the value 10 changes to 20. And then it's minus minus PTR. That means this address 106 becomes 
104. So we change the address. Then C becomes 1. 1 less than 4 is true. Now value at address 104 is multiplied by 2. So this 8 becomes 16. Then PTR is decreased, becomes 102. So it becomes 102. We have 4 at that address. So that's also multiplied by 2. It becomes 8. Then again, minus minus PTR is done. And we move to 100. Now C becomes 3. 3 less than 4 is true. We go inside the loop. This 2 changes to 4. And finally, this becomes 98. And C becomes 4. 4 less than 4 is false. So we stop the loop and come out. After finishing the loop, the loop starts again. The third loop starts where C again becomes 0. And it prints number 0, which has changed to 4 now. And then it is printing a hash sign. After that, C++ makes it 1. 1 less than 4 is true. So it prints number 1, which has now changed to 8. Then again, we get the hash sign with it. Then C becomes 2, which is 16. Then hash. And C becomes 3, which is less than 4. So it prints numbers 3, which is 20. And on the same line, you have to put a hash after 20. Then C becomes 4, condition is false, and it stops. So thus, my output includes these two lines. And these two lines have to be on separate lines. On first line, I should have 2 at the rate, 4 at the rate, 8 at the rate. And in the second line, I should have 4 hash, 8 hash, 16 hash, 20 hash. So if you write on the same line or if you don't give the proper new lines, the answer is supposed to be wrong. So you have to take care of the new lines. And the main thing in errors and pointers is always that whatever changes you make with the help of pointer, they are reflected back in the array because they all point to the same memory location. So I hope you understood. If Whenever you're going to do the question of errors and pointers with the diagram with proper positions, you'll never get wrong answer for that. So do it carefully. It's interesting and easy as well. Okay, now this is the last question for today's video. Here we have, by reference, used and default arguments to the functions. As we know that the execution always starts from main. So let's go to main first. So here is main where I have a variable number which is 20. So this is a local variable which is 20 initially. So number is initially 20, okay? Then we make a call from here, direct number. So control goes to direct and number is passed to num. So this num is nothing but another name for 20 because it's ampersand sign. This ampersand means reference operator which says no memory will be allocated for num. It's just another name for the same memory location number. Since it's just another name, so what we have over here is that this is num and what are we doing over here num plus equal to 10 so actually the changes are being done in this variable this becomes 30 then we call indirect we jump from here to the upper function indirect where this num which is 30 comes in temp temp have a default temp has a default value but this will be overwritten temp becomes 30 since temp is 30 in the first call over here the loop starts from 10. 10 less than equal to 30 is true. It comes here. It prints the value of i. So in output, it prints 10. Then there is a comma after that. Then i plus equal to 5 makes it 15. 15 less than equal to 30 is true. So it prints i. That is 15 and a comma after that. Then i plus equal to 5 makes it 20. 20 less than equal to 30 is true. So it prints i. That means 20 is printed. Then again it goes to the increment. i plus equal to 5 makes such 25. 25 less than equal to 30 is true. Then it prints i. That means 25 gets printed with a comma. Then i plus equal to 5 makes it 30. 
30 less than equal to 30 is true. So 30 also gets printed. Then I becomes 35. When it becomes 35, the condition becomes false. We stop. So we stop the loop, come out and give a new line. So that whatever is printed now will be printed on the next line. Since this function is over, it goes at the same place from where we call the function. So it goes back over here at this line. Now since this was the last line, it goes back to main. And when we go back to main, it calls indirect again from here. So when indirect is called from here, we are not passing any argument. So temp becomes the default value, which is 20. For the second call, the loop again starts from 10. So it prints 10. Then it prints 15. And then it prints 20. The condition becomes false at 25. So it stops and goes back to the same place where it was called. So it's going to come back over here to main. So the next statement after this is number is equal to the value of number. So it's going to print number Just understand that this is number. I'm not able to draw it so well. So number is equal to 30. So these three lines will be your output. So on first line, I'll have these numbers. On second line, I have these numbers. On third line, I'll have this value. So this is the output for your question number 13, where we have used call by reference and default arguments to the functions. This is question number 14 for random functions and this one is your question number five, 15 which is almost similar to the one which I've just explained to you. So just try doing these two questions by the next video and then we'll be discussing these questions in the next video. So this is it. Hope you understood what we have explained in this. And in case of any doubts, you can write in the comment section below. I'll get back to you in the next video or I'll answer back in your comment only. So keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.